Hello, I'm Chanel Shea Calvin. And I'm Lee Bannister. And welcome to this week's look into the post bag. Yeah, stay with us for the next half hour or so as we take our regular look back over some of the highlights from last week here on Big Centre TV, which includes Monica Price on her couch, an interesting game of Jenga, and we also take a first look at our new rock show, Amped. Now let's get in touch with us, then there are so many ways in which you can do so. On social media, just look us up at Big Centre TV. If you want to send us a quick email, then it's postbag at bigcentre.tv. And as I always say, if you fancy sending us a letter in the post, then the address is postbag Big Centre TV, 14A, Lower Hall Lane, Walsall, WS1, 1RL. So get them in quick, and we'll have a look at some of your comments later on in the show. But before all of that, let's uh, have a look back at some of the things we've been enjoying during last week. Now, on our history programme, Doorstep History, local historian Andrew Lound returned. Let's see what he had to share this week. Today I'm looking at the famous name of Hoskins and Sewell. Everybody knows them as bedmakers. It was an Ebenezer Hoskins. What a fantastic name that is, Ebenezer. Ebenezer Hoskins, who came from Plymouth to Wensbury. He came here as an apprentice coachsmith. Um, but in 1854, he set up in Highgate Lane in Birmingham as a bedstead manufacturer, bedsteads. Beds to be made out of metal tubing. Now, metal tubing in the region was one of the great manufacturing boons for the region, uh, coming from areas of the black country, from Coventry in the south, and you could shape and manufacture a whole host of things with the tubes, and bedsteads seemed to be an ideal thing to do. He teamed up with a man called John Key, and they set up Key and Hoskins. However, their agent in London, Edward Sewell, was beginning to get a name for himself, and he became a full partner. And thus, in 1871, it became Hoskins and Sewell. And they specialised in very high quality, very good quality uh, bedsteads. The big problem with metal bedsteads is a corrosion problem, and that is always going to be an issue. Um, so they try to experiment and develop new techniques of coating the metal so it would actually stay perfect longer and perhaps give a particular sheen to it. Well, time moves on and they're doing reasonably well and John Hoskins, the son of Ebenezer, takes over the company. But he takes over the company when the company hits a difficult period. They become a private limited company in 1897. But just a year later, Frederick Hoskins, the senior brother, dies. So John takes over. But John is a great innovator too. They've developed a whole new technique. They can make the beds look golden, look like it's silver, or even enamel it. And these coatings protect it from corrosion from almost any environment, including salt water environment, which means ships. And this is the period where the shipping industry is really growing. Huge liners are being built, quality first class. Now, first class passengers want the finest beds to sleep in, and they have to match the beautiful decor. So Hoskins and Sewell are offering the perfect quality of beds absolutely required for these ships. So that was Andrew Lound on Doorstep History. We actually received a message from one of our viewers about this program, as apparently a friend's husband insists that his wife types her favourite soap at 7.30pm so he can watch Doorstep History first. How nice is that? That is really nice, isn't it? <laughs> oh dear, now our music show Soundcheck has been on this week and this clip is a personal favourite of Chanel's as uh, Nick and Rhiannon get to know their guests in a pretty cool way. Let's take a look. Your challenge, each of you, starting with Namira, is to remove a piece of Jenga from the djembe. Off you go. <laughs> okay. You can't go from the top there, can you? No, that's not help. a cheat. I like... Oh, oh that's an easy oh, one. Oh. You've got skills there. Do I read what Yeah, read it out loud. If you could be granted one wish, what would it be? To win Jimmy Jenga. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, she already knows she's going to win it, doesn't she? That's what she said. Yeah, that's not a wish. I think... Um, to have all my ambitions come true, like for my career and stuff. That's a pretty good wish. Yeah. I think that's good, we'll take that. Cool. Right then, next. The trick is to look for the cracks. Okay. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go for this one, this might have been a bad idea. I think. You follow those innuendos, aren't you? Right? <laughs> Do you have any really bad habits? Okay, so I like to drink orange juice after I've washed my teeth. Oh, oh that's 
Really? Oh, that's <laughs> good. That's the only time you don't drink orange juice. That's when you're just shooting. That's horrible. Yeah, <laughs> do my jinga. Um, what is the worst present you have received? Uh, one birthday, I didn't receive a present. Oh, <laughs> at all? <laughs> True story. That's really sad. Okay. I might as well go for this one here. That's what she he speaks. Is. He speaks. I'm gonna break it. Oh. Oh no, this is just. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do if you were invisible for a day? My next door neighbour makes some really weird sounds, and I've always wondered what, what, kind of sounds what the source of the sounds are. It's, um, sometimes there's a low rumbling sound, sometimes there's a bit more of a high pitched sound, and uh, for the two years I've been in my flat, I've never been able to work out what the sounds are. So maybe I'll just like, go in the flat and see what I they do. That's a pretty good answer. So I guess mm. invisibility is sort of like a superpower. Yes. So, oh, if you had a superpower, what would it be? I knew she was going to ask that. <laughs> Um, do you know what? I would love to be able to travel in time. Oh, I'd nice. love to go to places where I've been when I was little to go and revisit and enjoy them again, you know. Yeah. That's a really what good answer. Um, I probably would go for invisibility as well, to be would fair. You? Or the power to just sleep forever. <laughs> to just sleep forever? <laughs> Not forever, but just anyway. <laughs> <laughs> On our live song program, Cooper TV, Monica Price was joined by Mr. Birmingham 2015, Joshua Williams. Well, I've always heard of the Mr. England competition through, mm -hmm. obviously, Mr. World, Miss World, yes. and obviously the Universe pageant, but I never really thought it would be something for me. But then, after, I was at a fashion show around a year ago today, and the um, comic Miss Birmingham, Rachel Barker, uh, 2013, she was actually in attendance and she was hosting the show. She said, why don't you try it for the competition? Yeah. And then I researched a bit more around it and I found out the ethics and values behind the competition and I just thought, it's too big an opportunity to pass up. And then after competing, I ended up winning the title, which I still, <laughs> I still can't believe. And what do you get? Do you get a cup or a, or a sash? What, what do you get? Uh, you we, get we get the sash and we get entry into the Mr England competition as oh, well, wow. in addition to representing our home city for two years. That's brilliant. Now, we've had Mr Black Country on the show, on the Cup of TV. So, um, you know, it's wonderful to have a representative for Mr Birmingham as well. So, again, what does it mean to you, though, Joshua, having that sort of title? Because that's a very, you, know, you must be very proud, I would imagine. Oh, of, co of course I'm proud, but I just try and stay grounded with the whole title because I feel that it's just more what you do with it, mm -hmm. because you can, yeah, like, you can let it go to your head, sorry, mm -hmm. and you can just let it almost absorb you, but I just want to be in it for the right, uh, the right reasons and just be able to excel through the competition for the morals and ethics that I hold true to myself. Mm. So it's, there's more to it than just winning it, as you oh, say. Oh, definitely. So tell us a little bit about you then, Joshua. How did it all begin? Was it something that you thought, oh, yes, I'm going to do this, or as you said, no, you just sort of fell into it? Yeah, I'd, yeah I just ended up really falling into it. Like I just researched around the competition in the advancement towards it mm. and I found that I could see uh, a central theme to the competition is the charity Beauty of a Purpose, mm. which is the official Miss and Mr World competition, uh, charity, sorry, mm. and that looks at helping change the lives of young children and disadvantaged people across the entire world. Oh. And that charity is something that really corresponds deeply with me and as soon as I thought, uh, found that that element was embedded in the competition, I knew that it's just something that I have yeah. to go for. Now, Wednesday was the premiere of our new rock show, Amped. It's presented by Johnny Doom, who you may have heard chatting away and playing music on Kerrang Radio for the past 11 years. Oh yes, he's very good. Now, basically, the show will consist of uh, all sorts of music and uh, rock well. bands and punk and all that. And, uh, well, in uh, this week's show, Johnny's first guests were Marta Demona. And, and, they, and they told him how they got together. Marta Demona kind of existed from probably about... Uh, late 2006, but it was a totally different lineup to, to what we've got now. Mm. Um, just started off with a couple of school friends. Um, was it your brainchild then? Yeah, in a way? it was. It was kind of started a band with a couple of schoolmates, and that kind of progressed. You know, started off playing covers and writing our own stuff, and uh, some very bad band names along the way, like uh, Nausea and Blood Sugar. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 really bad names. Um, but yeah, just kind of everything stemmed from that first band I put together and it's just kind of evolved into, into what we've got now. Um, we thought to the name Marta Demona back in, I think that was, that was late, 06. Um, right. And uh, that was, a, again, a totally different lineup. Um, we didn't really get serious and, uh, until probably, I'd, I'd say about 09, 2010 when we released the EVA EP. 
we'd started uh, you know writing a lot more of our own stuff and taking it a bit more seriously and getting better so you can see amped wednesdays at 10 p.m and friday nights at 11:30. Mm, okay that's it for part one but don't you go anywhere because we're going to take a look at some of this week's news stories and we're going to also delve into the good old post bag remember our details if you want to get in touch and if you're on facebook twitter or instagram just do a quick search for postbag at bigcenter.tv okay we'll see you after the break Welcome back to Postbag here on Big Centre TV with me, Chanel Shea Calvin. And me, Lee Bannister. And as a quick reminder about our new advertising competition, which closes midnight on Sunday the 19th of July. Yeah, do you fancy the idea of winning a two-month TV advertising campaign for your business? Oh. Yeah, it's all in our As Seen on Big Centre TV prize draw. And all you've got to do is email your name, company and contact details to us. Yeah, the email address is asseenontv at bigcentre.tv. And do that before July the 19th, and you could be in with a chance of winning this fantastic prize and a chance to see your ad on a few of your Channel 8, Virgin Channel 159 and of course the website which is bigcentre.tv. So that's your name, your company and your contact details to as seen on TV at bigcentre.tv before the 19th of July. Now you might remember last week Dawn Jones told us about a local band the Shanklins. They're some place based and they're arranging a charity event in October for Compton Hospice. Yeah, they're going to be performing with Alex Ohm, formerly with local band The Lines. He also supported Ocean Colour Scene at the Symphony Hall early on this year. And we said that you would probably see the Shanklings on Big Centre soon. And we're gonna keep and we're gonna keep our promise now. So here are the Shanklings with choir. <laughs> This week's news and Dudley Council has received national recognition for two of their initiatives at the UK Public Sector Communication Awards. Yeah, our Lindsay Smith spoke to the council leader Pete Lowe about what receiving the awards means for Dudley. Last week we were very successful in winning uh, two uh, national awards, in fact the only council in the whole of the West Midlands. One for the Facebook uh, forum uh, where, where people have the opportunity to ask any question of the leader being the only council in the country that actually has a uh, Facebook forum and secondly we are a national award with regard to uh, the Sunday Fun Day which was a council's response to uh, the English Defence League coming into Dudley early on in the year and both of these awards are on the back of the uh, the award we won early on in the year with regard to the Black Country Festival uh, and the award that we managed to, to win against organisations such as Barclays Bank and Aldi uh, Superstore. Again, the only council that was successful in winning that award. So we're delighted here uh, in Dudley with the achievements of our communication staff and what we've been able to achieve. What do these awards mean to the council? Well, it means an awful lot. What it means is that uh, what I always pledged as leader is that we wish to punch above our weight. We didn't just want to be relevant in Dudley, but we wanted to play our role on the national uh, scale. In the Facebook forum, we receive in numerous inquiries every week from other authorities that uh, want to uh, take best practice and see how that, that could work within their own community. The same with the fun day to say that we are as a council open for business and obviously with the Black Country flag which uh, then the festival which won the award earlier this year we're saying that uh, we're part of a massive uh, community and not only will we celebrate our history but what we want to do is forge a better future for the residents of Dudley and festival is a perfect opportunity uh, and has been so well received by the, by the community and is now got to the point where it's actually itself community run. 
Have any plans to improve it further in the future? Absolutely. I mean, simply on the train on the way back home, we've already started to think about how we can look forward to get next year's awards, uh, ways to actually, I've mentioned the Curry Forum, so we've already started not to just stand still, but embrace the Facebook Forum into the Curry Forum. What other initiatives can we do? With regard to the uh, Sunday Fun Day, we're already looking at working in partnership with the police later on this year to say that Dudley's a vibrant town, open for future. And as you've already seen with the Black Country Festival this year, we've not only broke world records, we've got the flag all over the globe. We've had thousands of events, raising hopefully hundreds of thousands of uh, pounds for charities and well-meaning cause. We just want to say very clearly that the communications team uh, in Dudley uh, are a fantastic group of people, that the community that we serve within Dudley, they're a Boston group of people, and we will continue to go from strength to strength and do all that we can to put Dudley and the black country on the map. And staying on the subjects of awards, a woman from Solly Hall has been presented with a national award for her services to volunteering and fundraising. Joyce Rothschild created Joyce's Quiz after recovering from breast cancer in 1997 and has gone on to raise over £100,000 for charity. Joyce went to London to receive her British Citizen Award and when she got back she met up with our reporter Tom Bowen to talk about the quiz. Okay, so um, so what I'm going to do with the theme, well I'm not telling you what the theme is this year, so it's secret, <laughs> only part because I haven't quite made when Joyce Rothschild first came up with the idea for Joyce's quiz nearly 20 years ago, she had no idea what it would grow into. She had been diagnosed with breast cancer and wanted to give something back to the hospital that had treated her. That's how it all began. It was just something that, that in a way came out of wanting to do something just to raise a bit of money for, for, for the local hospital. And it was so popular, I thought I might raise £500, but it raised just over £2,000, just through my own circle of people and friends, and they passed it on to friends, and somebody said, it's really good, why don't you do another one? So I did another one the following year and decided to raise money for the cancer centre that was being built in Birmingham at the time, um, and then came up with another idea, and, and somebody said, well, I, I love doing this, I'd love to send it to my friends, but they're not really interested in Birmingham. I thought, why shouldn't anybody be interested in Birmingham? There you go. Um, because they live in Scotland or something, so I thought, well, I'd choose a national... Uh, charity, so I chose Macmillan. Since she began working with yeah, Macmillan, Joyce has raised over £100,000, with the amount raised annually continuing to rise. Last year's quiz raised £12,695, and this year they're hoping to raise even more. Yes. Macmillan Cancer Support has been so grateful for everything that she's done between Joyce and Yasmi. They've got a huge following of people now that love doing the quiz and I think this year is going to be even better than ever with the themes that they're coming up with. So yeah, it's just so valuable to us as a charity that we've got people like Joyce and Yasmi that continuously fundraise for Macmillan Cancer Support. People within the local communities are so important to the charity because it's not just about raising the money, it's also bringing people together, people have fun, people meet one another through doing things like the quiz. And it's just so important that people within the local community can see where the money's going as well and the services that we provide within Birmingham. And that can be anything from our local healthcare providers and hospices and hospitals, or for advice and support through Macmillan grants for people that have been affected by cancer um, and just need a little bit of a helping hand. And obviously, of course, through the Macmillan nurses as well. As much as she enjoys it, it's hard work for Joyce, who still works a full-time job as well as working on the quiz. Last week, however, that hard work was recognised with a British Citizen Award. What was lovely about the ceremony is meeting so many people that, that do so many amazing things just quietly in their own local communities. And what this award does is it, it honours people and you know uh, gives some sort of recognition for people, a whole range of people in all different walks of life. Uh, it's great. I think it's lovely that it will bring some more publicity in for the um, for the charity. Um, I'm hoping that a few people might like to do the quiz as well, and and we can get a bit more money because of that. Um, but it was really really exciting. We had afternoon tea in the House of Lords and we had a, a lap of honour and an open top bus around London and the sun was shining and you know Big Ben was there in its golden glow. Um, and then there was a drinks reception in the um, in the in church house. And it was lovely because uh, they asked some of us to, to tell our stories 
um, a bit about why we did what we did, you know, what, what, the background. And to hear so many stories of people doing the most incredible things was just very humbling. But it, it puts the balance back because we hear a lot of bad news, don't we? You know, and horrible things going on. But there's so many people out there just doing the most amazing things. Um, I also, it's only me, it's only the quiz, but it seems to take, uh, you know, it gives a lot of pleasure to a lot of people. So I'm hoping it's something that will be, that will be helpful and, and, and do some good in the world. This year's quiz is still a few months away. But what can people expect once it's been completed? Well, hopefully you can expect a bit of challenge and a bit of fun. It, I normally bring it out around, around the end of September. Um, and people can take part until um, just after Christmas. So it will close probably about the first week of January. Um, and I can't tell you what to expect, but if you'd like to find out about it, you can always drop me an email. And, um, um, and, and so Joyce's quiz at gmail.com or joyce10 at icloud.com will get there. Tom Bowen yeah, for the Midland in Solihull. Thanks, Tom. Well, that's your post bag for this week. But don't forget, if there's anything that you'd like to talk to us about... Well, on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, just look us up, Big Centre TV. Or if you want to email us, then it's postbag at bigcentre.tv. And if you want to write us an actual letter, then our address is postbag at Big Centre TV, 14A Lower Hall Lane, Warsaw, WS1, 1RL. Now, I'll be back with What's On on Monday night at 7. And I'll see you again on Crossroads Check-In and also within What's On. But Postbag will be back at the same time next week, so we'll see you soon. Bye.